right. Thank you for staying with us. In case you are just joining, you are watching the Morning Bigo reaching you from NCBN headquarters in Abuja. And uh, it's time now for us to take a look at our second topic, which is the uh, June 12 Democracy Day and the protest that uh, we saw on that day. And uh, joining us to discuss that, we have Mr. Onecho John White uh, in the studio to help us uh, talk about these issues. He is a journalist and public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. All right, so let's uh, first uh, start. Democracy Day, 22 years after a, 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 an uninterrupted democratic uh, system in Nigeria. Um, let, what's your assessment of the journey so far? Uh, well, like I, I have always looked at it, uh, 1999 was the time we started the the second phase of uh, the democratic dispensation that witnessed a very long uninterrupted uh, the civilian rule in a democratic rule in Nigeria. And uh, of course it has been a lot of ups and downs, but uh, whichever way, it's a democracy and we're moving forward. It's at least a step further than the military rule because we're moving in the same direction and line with other communities of the world. There's no community that is ruled by a military again. So, being a democratic government, positive or negative, we are in the community of democratic nations and uh, we are moving at our own pace in our own direction. So. Yeah, but but, but is know, that even enough? Yes, for, because for that, that would be the next line of thought. Um, is there enough for us to just be carrying the tag, democratic states? Celebrating a democracy would mean that you, your citizens enjoy the dividends of democracy and of course the leaders abide by the rules of engagement <laughs> stipulated by democratic rule you see uh, one of the basic uh, tenets or future of democracy is the rule of law and you agree with me that the only thing that separate uh, the i mean the democracy from Here's military what I rule found on the web Pardon that me. separate democracy from uh, the military rule is the legislature I mean, the, I'm talking of the National Assembly. That's the only thing that's the difference between democratic, democratic government and the military government. Uh, come to talk of governance as a system, to a very large extent, uh, the government have failed in its official responsibility. I'm saying beyond democracy, you, you talk about governance because you say democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Government of the majority is different from what we have currently in Nigeria. So to a very large extent, our Nigerian democracy is epileptic. It is in practice, but not achievable by the I mean, objective of democracy. So that, uh, what, what we call a democracy where people don't have their own voice. A democracy that muzzles people's freedom of speech when the, the press is not free to express. A democracy that is just banning a Twitter hand, I mean, uh, I mean, the means of public expression like Twitter, a democracy that is asking social media to come and register before they can participate, unlike all other nations. So it is epileptic. That's what I mean is that it's not in full practice like it should be, yeah. if you ask but me. But is there anything wrong with asking uh, social media operators to come and, you know, register and have license? Isn't that just uh, by way of, you know, safeguarding? Because there are there are limits isn't it uh, yes we know that uh, fundamental human rights are very important yeah. and that they should be respected but to each of these rights i believe that there are exceptions isn't it and so for in the case where there it are limitations on the rights of others exactly but so this where is, is the line our fear in this case is this the Nigerian democratic system, I don't want to say the Nigerian government, but the Nigerian democracy government, is a democratic government is moving towards muzzling freedom of expression. You look at, the, you see that marital relationship between hate speech and this current ban on the Twitter, the social medias, I mean social media uh, platforms. Now, if you look at the hate speech and the ban on those uh, social media platforms, they are intermarried. Now, if you are saying they are coming to register, they should register before, I mean, it means you few are going to use Facebook now. There are things you should say and things you shouldn't say. It's a way of, I mean, slowing down what people can say and how people can express themselves. Yeah. Of course, if you go to the conventional uh, media houses, like the newspaper house, television stations, there are things they will never allow you to say. But you can tweet that. 
So and but, that, and but it isn't it just you know for our own sanity and for our own social coexistence that we insist that people I mean, yes, people can say, can have the freedom to express themselves. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, it's important to also guard against elements of disunity and elements of hate and, you know, bigotry and all of that. Why now? I've been in the Democrats have been there since 1999. And this government is about uh, how many years old? So why now? That they see, I mean, a sort of uh, speech that is not conventional from the president and it was exposed by twitter and they start this ban of a thing why now are they not seeing the sanity now what new have twitter or facebook or instagram done new that is calling for a ban well but the conversations surrounding fake news have been going on for a while now if you remember um i think about some months barely six seven months ago we we seriously were talking about you know uh, putting a bill on social media use and, and all of that. So technically, it's not exactly a new thing that um, we're seeing. It, it would appear that the process was started when that particular line of conversation it will have was allowed, started. I mean, it will have been through the normal process of law, through the National Assembly and maybe a law to that effect. And all this banned because of the expulsion of uh, the president's speech and the, I mean, comment and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I look at it as being more about the government, I mean, a, a militarized democracy that we have in Nigeria. Well, this is the same democracy that people, democracy and governance that negotiate with bandits. We see that. It's the, I mean, it was on the air. Somebody mediated between the bandits and the government. It was allowed. But peaceful protesters, they go out to shoot at them. That's the type of democracy we have in Nigeria. And that's why we are seeing that they are against public expression of, I mean, self-expression, freedom of speech. Well, it would appear that you are not very much a fan of the current um, practices in our democracy. And rightly so. Uh, a lot of Nigerians feel the same way. But I would like to talk about our electoral process. Because, again, one of the biggest tool, one of the biggest weapon a citizen can have in a democratic state is... The election, the right to vote, the, the right of the majority. Do you trust that our electoral process can allow us benefit from this come 2023? No, I, 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 I don't think so. The only way we can get it, and that's why I, I fought the protest yesterday, uh, well, I mean, uh, day before yesterday, the June 12 protest. What I expected our youth to come out to protest was electoral reform, local government autonomy. And I expected them to do more of the protests in their respective states than coming to protest in Abuja and uh, elsewhere against... In fact, the tagging, the protest was the right thing, but in the wrong direction. Of course, the, the right to protest is a fundamental right of the citizen. There's nothing wrong in protesting. But you are trying... Those people that protested were talking from both sides of their mouth. You say you are celebrating Democratic Day and you are asking that a democratically elected government must go. How do you remove a democratically elected government? How do you say Buhari must go? Somebody that is ele I mean elected, somebody that is voted for and sworn in. Go back to your use your ballot uh, I mean means and tell him to go. Protest that go back to your state and protest against the governors who swore to protect life and property and cannot do so in their respective states. I'm not the president. So what I am saying is electoral, for us to have it right, there must be electoral reform. And the electoral reform bill in the House must be signed into law. That is the only way we are going to get it right. Now you are a political scientist and um, of all people on this set, you would be best to answer this question because your response suggests otherwise. Are we saying that a democratically elected leader yeah. cannot be asked to leave? By the people who you can elected ask him, him to resign but not ask him to go those are two different things okay Ex explain to us you know the right process because of course we need people to be enlightened about this that Very is good. why it's important if you are thinking he is not he's has underperformed why he's not performing and you need him to leave immediately before the end of his tenure go to the state assembly and ask, i mean national assembly i ask that they should call for his impeachment Take your protest. They don't go to the streets and endanger people's life. You you get so call for his impeachment through the, the I mean the, the right channel through the rule of law. Let the National Assembly decide that. 
are not you coming to the street and ask to go to go where hmm. well I, I would like for us to you know just uh, look at other issues uh, there seem to be root causes for all of these uh, things that we are seeing manifesting in different forms uh, we've heard even bandits say well they are doing the kidnapping and the abductions that they are doing because they feel like they are marginalized they they feel that they are not you know benefiting from democratic uh, dividends and all of that we seem to have seem to be talking about the same issues that we've been experiencing even right from after the independence issues of corruption nepotism issues of social injustice and all of that and it appears that more than 60 years down the line it appears that we are we are still you know not been able to overcome you know some of those issues till date why is it so uh, the major problem lies with us because the Buhari is not from space. Jonathan was not from space. Those people are from among us. All Nigerians have always agitated is Jonathan must go. Buhari must go. We have never taken time to think who should be the next president and what should be the criteria of the next president. We have not really taken time to think about that. So what, um, to merge the two together, what is calling for all this uh, agitation and here and there is bad governance. There's no part of this country that is secure today, which is the primary responsibility of the government, protection of life and property. If you go to the northeast, north central, like in Benue, anywhere in the country, go to the east, nowhere is secure. People are being killed on a daily basis. So it means, once it is like that, I mean, there's, there's, it's bound to give rise to more crimes, like in the, the, in the case of the, uh, the east, when the president said they are, I mean, adult in the cycle. If you ask me, I'll look, I'll look at that as a hate speech. You are, you, are, you are commonizing a section of the country that they are nobody, that they are a dot, just a dot in the cycle and all. So those no, people who want to push the back... the president is referring to the group itself, not necessarily the whole region. I think that's the point that... It's we not every IPOP that is an unknown gunman. And it's not every unknown gunman that is an IPOP. IPOP is a body. It's a movement that is agitating for a, what they say is their right address it legally how many times have they called them to a round table for a discussion is it not the same thing with the, the but, media but let's ask the question does ipop represent does it represent the southeast as a whole it's an extraction from among the people of the southeast those are people from the southeast agitating for what they say is their right Hold and negotiate with them ask them what are your grievances how do we get out of this what do we do about this discuss with them you don't use arm and forces for all solutions you know mr white is uh, this particular topic for me embodies the core of nigeria problem our electoral process electing the right leaders yeah and then the sentiments attached to it now one of the things that ipop is demanding for or one of their grievances is the fact that we do not have um, a sort of equal representation when it comes to the South. Again, East. they are wrong in that. Democracy is a game of number. How many people, persons, have contested election one and refused to be given the right? You lobby, you negotiate. If you feel the, I mean, your uh, your part of the country is not duly represented in the government, layers. How many times have they gone to layers with other regions? Support us for presidency this time. The next time will support you. But the federal character allows for us to be very, very particular with this particular representation. It demands that we, we are deliberate in allowing people to come to the table. We're deliberate in ensuring that we have equal representation, not just in government, but also in workspaces, in ministries. And this is part of their demand. For instance, we just have the, you know, the, the chiefs of security being um, elected not elected, appointed, that's the word, um, after much agitation for a change. And one of the things that was particularly pointed out was the fact that there was nobody from the southeast. Are we then saying that we do not have capable people from this part of the country? Because again, this is one of the agitations, that there is no deliberate effort in ensuring that everybody feel represented. And so when you think about it, have we done a good job in bringing everyone to the table and ensuring that they feel 
belong or among? Oh, uh, I I have been since you started the question. I know where it was said, and I have been thinking of the appropriate word to use. I don't want to use nepotism, but uh, I think for now that will be the only word at my disposal for now. Uh, all appointments that are single, I mean, that are left at the discretion of the president has been lopsided. Uh, lopsided. You discover that most of those appointments are given to a side of the country. Like, let me give the issue of uh, uh, the NBC. The DG NBC was recently removed but, but the president, and replaced. The, the president has made uh, an explanation to that. In the last interview we saw uh, with all the That channels. all appointments should come from the north? No, 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 no. no. That, that these are systems and there are people in the systems some of them you will have to rise through the ranks and some of the criteria that is being considered before an appointment is made is how much is is the the, the track record of the person in the service and how the person have risen through the ranks before that will be guaranteed and whether coincidentally you know it happens that uh, you know, these persons now happen to come from a setting or a particular region. It's entirely a different conversation. But that's the conversation and that's the explanation. That, that of the military, I may not know much about that. But what will you say of a, D I mean, a NBC where a professor is removed and replaced with a reporter? Are, are you getting what I am saying? The DG of uh, uh, NBC uh, is a professor. Professor Armstrong Idachaba was the one that was there. And is removed and replaced. We must by remember that he was the acting DG. Yeah. We must remember that. Okay. And so when you're an acting DG, yes. uh, you can be replaced. It can be made Especially permanent. Especially with uh, another person from entirely outside the, I mean, the, the organization. You are bringing a new person outside the organization to replace an acting DG who is a professor in that same field. Not even a professor under another, I mean, a professor in journalism. We look at that as a and the coincident it will have been the yoruba person you understand because nigeria we are a country of a uh, tribesmen we are not country of citizens forget what the constitution say that is the truth of it anything appointment has to be what people look at is it from the north from the east from the south or from the middle belt that's what we look at not is he a nigerian so hence it is the standard. That's why a lot of us are crying of marginalization. No part of the country that is not marginalized as it is today. Because all name all the appointment that is key there to the north. All right. Let, that's my personal observation. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that is what name them. Even if I'm among the the ministries. <laughs> Except uh, ones like uh, art and culture and uh, all those square, but the key ones are right. the north. Uh, Let's talk about the issues of true federalism, restructuring, and all of that. It's also another issue that has lingered for quite a while. Uh, and uh, some people are of the opinion that if only Nigeria will look at that area and have the, a true federalism, that it will douse some of these agitations and all of that. On the flip side of it, there are those who have said, well, uh, even the governors, you know, uh, politicians at the regional level have not demonstrated enough commitment, you know, to even make such demands and that uh, they do not have the will, you know, to actually uh, follow to through with the whole uh, thing about restructuring you know an instance is the issue of financial autonomy for the judiciary the local government uh, and the state assemblies and all of that I mean very recently Jusun has been on strike over financial autonomy for judiciary and all of that so what's your own assessment and how are we going about this issue we have a very good paper democracy uh, paper federalism in Nigeria paper federalism. We have very good law and the, our federal system is a very good one on the paper. But in practice, the local government is more or less an arm of the state. The local government chairman are, are there less or advanced commissioners of the governor. The governors are like ministers of the, the president. There's no clear I mean, definition of uh, arms of uh, the three types of uh, federalism in Nigeria. And un unless and until it all go down again to the restructuring that people are talking about. And one, each time they talk about restructuring, 
the reaction of people to it and look at i continue to wonder why are they afraid of restructuring because the if, the nigerian system nigeria as a state was not was not an agreement of anybody it was just a design of the colonial masters for their own convenience and all these problems started from the amalgamation of the 1914. we did not agree that we should come together and become one one nation one country it is these colonial people that forged these two uh, protectorates together. Do not forget that before they come, we were living in kingdom, chiefdom, and emirates. But because they want to have harness those people together to have convenience, they forged this marriage. Even when we have different cultural background, we have different uh, beliefs, we have different, uh, we are not similar in any form. They match us together. Okay, fine. They have done their own for their own covenant and gone. Now that we have independent and we, are, we said we are united in diversity, unity in diversity. It means we are different, but forged together. I don't want to call it united together, but forged together. Good. Let's sit down and agree. This is not our design. This is what the colonial people did for their own covenant. But now that we are, we want to move together. Let us agree. You are an evil man. This is a Yoruba person, a man, house, a man. Let us see what, what, what do you want? So that we structure the country as to be convenient for us as a people. So that up to now, I don't know which is the constitution of Nigeria. Because the 1999 constitution was the design of the military as to be convenient for them. Let us now have a, a, I mean, a civilian constitution that is convenient for Nigeria. So I'm saying that the only way out to get this problem solved is restructuring. So the follow-up to that, why is it such a difficult thing, uh, having, have, having experienced this system of governance? Because uh, I'm aware that um, in the First Republic, yeah. that was the experience of Nigeria, and many people have attributed to the fact that some of the lasting legacies that we enjoy till date was you know, from those days. So why is it such a difficult thing to go back to that system? Because of our grids. And like I said, we are a country of tribes men. Once you are in power, everything, winner takes all, everything goes to your place. Do you get this one? So the other people will cry of marginalization for the eight years you are going to do there. Once it comes back to their place again, they do the same to others. And that is why it all turns, we are moving around the same cycle until we restructure and define what should come from where and what should go to where. And you know, this brings me to, to this question. We are in a new political era where young people are more, um, should I say, active in the processes, at least as much as we can see. We're seeing young people being very vocal. We're seeing young people participating in local government politics, which is very impressive. However, even from your response earlier, we could see that there is a vague knowledge of what really the process demands. Um, talk about the protest, for instance. While the protest is allowed, as you've said, the attention being given to Buhari must go it's not likely what would take us to where we want Nigeria to be. We want a place that is democratic. We want a place that is very much in line with the federal character that we have put on paper, but are yet to implement. Now, if we take our trajectory, our history of being tribesmen, of always waiting for the next eight years so that when we come in, we can also you know, make sure that our people benefit. What can young people do to change this narrative? Because whether we like it or not, we stand the risk of also working in the same shoes that the predecessors have. I'm worried about our youth today. I'm afraid I don't want to totally lose confidence in our youth. Because uh, the, the dimension we are taking in recent time is scary. You see, uh, let me go back a little to those that have been presidents before now. Shagari was a classroom teacher. Jonathan was a lecturer. Uh, Buhari was a, a military man and a, a header, do I call him that? And, but you see a young man today, able-bodied young man, he's not doing anything, he says he's comrade. That's what he does for a living. You see this one, he's not doing anything, he says he's a politician. That's what he do for a living. So at the end of the day, this idleness and the over dependent on politics once you give them any peanuts they'll do anything to twist anything like let me give you another clear instance when there was NSAS protest 
the protest, the, the intention of the protest was defined. They were protesting against the misconduct or unprofessional conduct of a unit of the Nigerian police. And it was obvious that the, uh, the SAS was, I mean, misbehaved in that time. So, end SAS protest. And you see the, the support and sympathy that that protest enjoyed from other Nigerians. But now, those same persons you are seeing, why I say I'm losing confidence in Nigerian youth, on that June 12 protest, you see some persons that came out according to them, that they were giving 1,000. Some of them said they were giving 2,000 according to them to come out and protest in support of Buhari. You understand? Now, we are talking about the future of Nigeria, which is my future and that of my children, because those in the 70 something 60 something years are already going then you are taking money to protest against your own future so i don't see the youth has been really prepared to take over the mantle of leadership from the elders because what is the really thing now is how much do you have not how much do you know so everybody that all those people you are seeing, Buhari must go. This is they are talking about what they can get, not what they can do for the country. So that is my view about Very it. Very important. Uh, now that uh, you know some of these channels have been abused, uh, yes, uh, we understand that for most times in recent past, uh, protest itself seem to have been hijacked by political interests, whether for or against. Uh, it has shown that there are certain interests behind, you know, some of these protests. What's the option now that is left for the genuine and the, the, the ordinary Nigerian that genuinely seek for change? What are the platforms? How can patriotic Nigerians actually, you know, seek for good change. governance and real change and hold government accountable? Go back to the glass root. Do you have for that, Scott? start from there then if there must be any protest the real protest should start from our individual grassroots we have local government chairman who are not doing anything we have governors that are always civil servants the months or up to a year of salary we have of as of assembly that don't have any defined duties let us go back there and start protesting from there let's start owing them i mean holding them accountable to what we elect them to do let's start from there then let us expand our political sensitization. Let us tell people, this is your right, that is your right, and this is the only way to do it. Then let us sensitize people on the need to vote for who can do, I mean, who can govern rightly and not to have much money to give. So the change starts from the grassroots, not from the top here, from our individual. Let us, what we need is attitudinal change. Let us change our attitude. No, 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 it must not be money all the time. Let us look at even the person that is supposed to, that we know have the credibility, although even when the uh, integrity can be deceptive at a time, uh, because we have seen people who believe that have the integrity and they disappointed us. But still, we cannot use the error of one person to judge everybody. Let us go back to the grassroots. The people who think have the integrity, have the credibility to lead, let us support them to into governance than uh, who has more money to give and uh, all of that. Thank you very much, Mr. White. It's been a very insightful conversation with you. And as usual, we hope to have you another time. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All yeah, right. We have been speaking with uh, Oche John White. Uh, he is uh, a, pol a public affairs analyst and a political scientist. Thank you so much for coming. Now, we'll go on a quick break. And then when we come back, the morning we go, we'll continue. Please stay on us.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are totally late, but you are just in time for the Commerce Council. So let's take a look at what the Commerce Council have for us today. All right. Thank you for staying with us. Unfortunately, you were unable to bring you the Commerce Council. We'll, we'll do that. You know what Nigerians say? Now who their life, they find money. Yeah. So it looks like a proper alternative for Commerce Council today. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, at this point, we've come to the end of the show for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, we hope that you join us tomorrow. In case you've missed, you can always catch up on our social media handle. Our YouTube channel will have the interviews. Uh, thank you so much for joining again. Uh, bye for now. I am Ayubi Ilya. And from me, Ashashiata, it is a goodbye. Let's continue to take all the right steps in making this space a better place. As we stay at home today to observe Democracy Day, we enjoy this holiday. Let's take a time, take a minute to reflect on all the things that we could do better and all the things that we're not doing right. So from me again, it's a goodbye. See you tomorrow morning. Enjoy your day. Bye. This is NCBN. My name is Samson Solomon uh, Ijama, MC Parrot. I'm a stand-up comedian and a TV host. My point of view on the development of the comedy industry in Nigeria, it's um, taking a good, sweet shape right now because uh, we have good comedians like